I mean, look how soft and bouncy these are. You will absolutely love this recipe. Hey you guys, I've got the most delicious pillowy soft cinnamon roll recipe for you. And yes, we will be shaping them into bennies because why not? After all, Easter is around the corner. I'll be sharing some tips and tricks to make these and believe me, once you take a bite of these fluffy, luscious treats, you'll be craving more. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I love sharing my recipes and baking tips with you all. So without further ado, let's get started. So I admit, when I first started making cinnamon rolls from scratch, it was a little intimidating, but it doesn't have to be when you know some tips. I'm going to start off by activating the yeast. You're going to take a third of a cup of milk and you're going to just heat that up until it's warm. You can heat it up in the microwave too if you want. If you have a food thermometer, it's best to get it to 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's when you're going to pour one packet of instant yeast into the warm milk. Mix that in a bit and leave it alone. Within five to 10 minutes, you'll see it bubble up like this. And this is how you know your yeast has been properly activated. Next, we're going to make the paste. Do not skip this step. This paste is what will make these rolls pillowy soft. In a small pot, you're going to pour all three of the paste ingredients and mix it on medium low heat. It will quickly turn into paste, so do not leave it alone. Keep whisking and within a minute it will get thicker and you're going to take it off the stove as soon as you see a paste-like consistency. Okay, so now I have all my ingredients prepped. We have the activated yeast, the paste, the bread flour, butter, sugar, salt, and an egg. So I'm just going to combine all the ingredients into the bowl of my stand mixer. Don't forget to melt the butter beforehand and you're just going to mix that all up until well combined. Now you're going to take the bread flour and slowly incorporate that in, in three stages, mixing on medium low speed with each stage. As soon as the dough has combined, you're going to switch to the dough hook. Just a side note, if the dough is looking a little sticky, you can add a tiny bit of flour. Keep in mind, you don't want to add too much. You still want the dough to be a little tacky. The dough will slowly come together like this, and you're going to knead this with the dough hook for eight minutes on medium speed. So I have a lightly greased bowl here and I'm going to place the ball of dough in it and cover it up with a kitchen towel. When proofing dough, it's typically best to do it in warm temperatures, so I like to preheat my oven to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, turn it off and put the covered dough in there, keeping the door slightly open. Waiting, of course, is the hard part. We are going to proof this for one hour. While I wait, I like to make the frosting. This is a delicious, easy icing glaze you can make for these rolls. We're basically just adding four ingredients into a bowl, starting with creaming up some butter. Cream the butter for one to two minutes, then you're going to add the powdered sugar in three stages, mixing for a few seconds between each stage. Next, add the vanilla and mix that in before adding in the cream. I'm going to start off with one teaspoon of heavy cream, mix that all together and you'll see the frosting will start to come together. You can add a tiny bit more of heavy cream at a time if you want a lighter and thinner consistency. I'm liking how spreadable this is so I'm going to cover it up and set it aside. Make sure the plastic touches the frosting so that it doesn't form a thin crust. Okay, so after an hour your dough should have doubled in size. Deflate it with a light punch, and as you can see, this dough is not dry, which is what we're looking for. I'm going to very lightly flour my work surface because again, we don't want to dry out this dough. You should still feel some sort of tackiness to it, yet you can still easily lift it from the surface without it sticking. I'm going to start rolling it out, and I find that a lot of people don't talk about this enough, but you can take your time rolling out this dough. In the beginning, you'll see it spring back easily, and that's because you need a bit of time to relax the gluten. You'll see after a few minutes, it will begin to stay in place as you roll it out. You can also lift the dough every now and then to make sure the bottom isn't sticking to the surface. And I wanted to show you that it's good to check on the overall thickness of the dough, as you can see here, the middle is significantly thicker than the edge. You want it to be consistent throughout, ideally a quarter to a half an inch thick. So I'm going to keep rolling it out. 
I probably took up to 10 minutes rolling this out so again it's okay to take your time with this this ended up being 18 by 12 inches you want one side of your dough to be at least 12 inches so you can make at least 12 rolls and the other side to be 15 to 18 inches so you can get a lot of spirals now I'm incorporating the filling ingredients. I'm taking softened butter and evenly spreading it throughout. Next, I'm going to mix the brown sugar and cinnamon and sprinkle and spread that out as evenly as I can. It's also important to pat it down so that it sticks to the butter. I'm going to roll from the shorter side because we have ears to shave, so we need a lot of spirals on this roll. So tightly and carefully roll it and dab the ends so it sticks. And here I'm just using a ruler to make marks on where to cut. You're going to want them to be one inch thick. I just have a regular knife here. I didn't have a serrated knife, but that's the type of knife that is best to use for cutting the dough. Or if you have unflavored dental floss, you can use that too. And look at these layers of spirals. This is what you're looking for. Okay, so this is the time you're going to preheat your oven. It's time to shape these into bunnies. I'm going to unroll the end about four to five inches and using my fingers, I'm going to shape the ears. Be sure to pinch the bottom of the ears and dab the loose end with a little bit of water so it can stick. We're going to let these proof for an additional 20 to 30 minutes before putting them in the oven. So just cover them up and leave them on your kitchen counter to puff up a bit more. Bake for 10 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. After 10 minutes, take them out because you see here, the ears are not looking so long. They are looking more like bears. So you're going to use some utensils. I'm using metal straws. You can also use wooden chopsticks, whatever you have on hand. And I'm just going to pinch the bottom of the ears once again to make them appear longer. Then I'm going to put them back into the oven for an additional two to three minutes until they are golden brown. I've let them cool down a bit and look how adorable these look. So now I'm going to add on the glaze I made earlier. I also have these icing flowers so I can make a cute little floral crown for each of them. I kept these pretty simple, but you can add sprinkles and make them even look more colorful if you like. I mean, look how soft and bouncy these are. You will absolutely love this recipe. I hope you get to try it for Easter or for any special occasion such as kids' birthday parties or any spring or summer events. These are of course best served warm. I actually find that you can have them within three days and they are still so delicious. Just pop them in the microwave for 10 to 15 seconds and they will still be fluffy and soft. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video and if you tried making these let me know in the comments thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video